Howdy folks and to all the wonderful subscribers. This is your Chief Edu Lang C and back again for another segment. Before anything else, if you haven't subscribed yet, kindly click on the button and click if it pleases you. Our topic for this segment is about the cooling system of the ship in the machinery spaces, most notably located in the engine room area. For starter, this video presentation is sponsored by Peak Auto Supply. Peak Auto Supply. Let's begin. The topics contained therein are cascaded to me by seasoned chief engineers who also happens to be the owner of Peak Auto Supply, with other partners whose names are not mentioned. These are the chief engineers, which is uh, Chief uh, E. Corodan and Chief Engineer J. Ramos. Note, I will present this video presentation as a facilitator or narrator and not necessarily as a subject matter expert with an unhand experience related to it. The machinery systems fitted in onboard ships are designed to work with maximum efficiency that is running on long hours. The most significant losses when these systems are in operations is one form of energy we call heat. However, the energy loss is not totally an actual loss but instead we also need to control and minimize it to some degree to avoid malfunctioning or breakdown of machineries. Such heat energy has to be reduced or rejected or extracted if you want to use the term by a cooling medium. And in this respect, the central cooling medium system is a fly. There are two cooling systems on board for cooling purposes. Number one is sea water cooling system, while number two is fresh water or centralized cooling system. We will tackle first a discussion about centralized cooling water, which is the press water. Now let's try to understand first central cooling system. As you can see in this diagram, or black schematic diagram, in the central cooling system, the main machineries on ships are cooled down using circulating fresh water. And generally, it comprises of three different circuits. And one is the seawater circuit, two is the low temperature circuit, and three is the high temperature circuits. And of course, on top of that, you would be able to see major uh, devices or equipments uh, in this diagram. As you can see on the top is the so-called uh, cooling water expansion tank, the one that is uh, colored uh, cyan, green. Uh, the colors are not necessary to present the system, it's just to uh, give an identification or a distinction of the layout of the flow and pipeline. And of course, other devices, so-called the temperature control valves, which is the thermo, like the three-way thermo control valves. Other systems are the so-called heat exchangers. And of course, the last but not the least is the so-called cooling press water pumps. And these are the main components that you'll find in this centralized cooling system. The seawater is used as a cooling media in uh, large seawater uh, heat exchangers or cold heat exchangers to cool the freshwater uh, system or the closed circuit. Um, these are the center coolers of the system. Uh, normally, they are installed in uh, parallel with the fresh water system. The low temperature circuit is actually used for low temperature zone machineries. This circuit, of course, is connected to the main sea water cooler. Of course, the temperature is lower than that of the high temperature. The expansion tank, the high temperature circuit in the central cooling system comprises of the jacket water system, as I'm pointing right now, and uh, of the main engine, where the temperature is quite high. Uh, it's about... Uh, 80 degrees to 95 degrees. Uh, depends, of course, of your engine and uh, system. Uh, this is also used in freshwater generator. 
diesel generator during standby condition. And they are of course uh, circulated through electrical cooling water pumps. When the main engine is stopped, it, is kept, it, it has to be kept warm by high temperature cooling water from the diesel generator. If the diesel uh, generator is not enough, uh, with regards to the temperature, then of course uh, a heating medium is also utilized and in this case we use the so-called steam heated press water heater. The expansion tank as you can see in this uh, black diagram is uh, uh, the one that compensates the heat loss through a closed circuit loop. Of course this is also the storage where the press water uh, medium is uh, put in, uh, is refilled from time to time. This also absorbs the pressure that increases because of thermal expansion. Now, of course, you can see here also the temperature control bulbs, and this is the one actually that mixes the press water from the expansion tank and also the one that is circulating from the one that is going through and out the uh, main engine. And press water uh, system is used in main engine for the reason that uh, seawater is corrosive. And this hereby uh, minimizes the uh, maintenance and cost uh, reduction purposes. Now there are two types of uh, heat exchangers being utilized uh, on board ships. The most uh, majority of them or the most popular ones are the so-called uh, plate type uh, exchangers and the other one is the so-called uh, tube uh, type uh, exchangers uh, as shown in this uh, 3D uh, animations. So the reason for the uh, First one is that uh, the plate type heat exchangers that uh, it has uh, less maintenance and much more easier to maintain. But of course, uh, in terms of uh, material costing, it's quite more expensive than the tube type uh, heat exchangers. However, its performance is much more better. Right, okay, let's give you a virtual reality tour. And as you can see, I'm in the entrance door of the engine room. It's very obvious. So let's get in. Let's go down and then I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Uh, okay, all right. So now you can see there that's your uh, CW expansion tank where you can see the pipes there. That's the one that goes down to your uh, freshwater cooling centralized system. And some of the pipes, of, of course, uh, supply for the uh, uh, air uh, compressors and the diesel generators. So let's go down and uh, go to your main uh, cooling system. That's the press water generator as we pass by and let's go down. And here we are. These are the uh, CFW jacket uh, cooling water pump. And there are two, of course. And some ships have also other uh, substitute or uh, alternative uh, pumps uh, in case of uh, maintenance and other uh, issues. Now, that's the pipe that comes from your CW expansion tank. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it draws out the water by gravity and then goes to your so-called centrifugal radial type of pumps and it goes and supplies to your main engine so it draws out the heat uh, from the main engine which uh, produces a tremendous heat and it goes out and goes back and some of them will go back to your uh, expansion tank and while of course the rest will go to your so-called jacket cooling uh, heat exchanger so this is the inlet and this is the outlet now of course you have the so-called uh, three-way uh, thermal bulb that controls the uh, recirculation of your uh, water cooling system at the same time uh, mixes the press water cooling so that the temperature will be met accordingly so if the uh, setting uh, has been met uh, with regard to temperature then it's either it goes back and recirculates to your uh, pumps and again goes back again to your engine or it gonna go back to your so-called expansion tank and mixes with your uh, so-called uh, uh, press water stored in there so it is uh, in that cycle of course the heat that has been drawn out from the engine through the closed uh, loop circuit of the press water system its heat is being extracted or rejected by the seawater which is on the other side that is the low temperature and this is the high temperature so we'll have uh, another discussion of the seawater uh, system uh, in the next episode of our discussion so that's basically uh, the uh, um, 
virtual to reality that I have uh, shown you with regards to the uh, uh, actual layout. It's probably different in um, depends on the ships. And this might not be. Uh, uh, this is just well emphasized. And as you can see, you have here also the heater. And as I mentioned earlier, if the vessel is alongside ports and the engine is not running, uh, a certain temperature is also being maintained. And one of the reasons there is that, of course, if the vessel is in many different places uh, around the world, it is, of course, uh, 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 exposed into different temperatures. The same thing when it's running. That's why you have a closed system to be able to have a degree of control of the temperatures because if the seawater temperatures is... Uh, uh, of course too cold then you don't want to take in that uh, cold uh, temperature uh, well, so you could just recirculate so the uh, low temperature system for the seawater is basically a combination of close uh, and open loop system and semi closed loop so that you could actually uh, manipulate the temperatures now this uh, heating uh, for the uh, fresh water is utilized using the uh, uh, heat uh, coming from the diesel generator cooling system if the heat is not enough, then uh, a steam is supplied into this uh, heater so that uh, it can further meet the temperature requirements. So that's the whole uh, idea or principles and operational uh, uh, applications of your so-called centralized freshwater cooling system. In the next video, please uh, keep posted. We will be tackling about the seawater cooling system.